Hi and welcome to this lesson on the translation of a function. Now translation simply means moving. The translation of a function is when we move it. So imagine this function. Let's call it f of x. And let's imagine us moving this one up. But before we do so, let's say that's negative 2. And now I know that if I want to know what the value of the function is when x is equal to negative 2, I just go up to my function and across, and I can read it off of here. Or what I can simply do is to substitute negative 2 into my function formula, f of 2. So what's going to happen if I move this thing up? For example, like that. And I moved it up for or one unit so the space I used um, I used to move it up with that is just one one unit up now what will the new value be well isn't it quite obvious that this point has just moved one value up the y value has increased with one value so this new value will still be f in the point negative 2 but we will add one more okay so it's quite clear to see that if I have a new function, let's just call it y, and that new function is uh, moving up with one space, then it I just take my old function and to every value I'm going to add 1. So that from that we can simply conclude that when we translate upwards, okay, so translate, if I translate up, let's say with p units no q with q units then my new function will be my old function plus q we'll look at some examples i'm sure it's going to make quite good sense okay um but if i were to go translating down with q units then obviously I'm just going to subtract q each time. So this time it would still be the same function f x, but this time I'm going to subtract q units. So that's easy enough. It's actually when we start going left and right when things seem to get weird. Let's look at that. Okay, so here we have f x again. So imagine this time we are going to move it uh, one unit to the left. So if it used to turn here at negative 2 and it moves a one unit to the left it's now going to turn at negative 3 and if it maybe used to cut there at negative 1 now it's going to cut at negative 2 so that it kind of looks like this now it's going to cut there okay maybe turn on the axis this time and come this way okay so that's more or less what I'm trying to tell you and this used to be negative 3 now it's negative 4 so do you notice everything is happening sooner I used to only get to the x-axis at negative 3 now I'm already getting there at negative 4 I used to only turn at negative 2 now I'm already turning at negative 3 everything is happening sooner that is because my input is being messed around with okay my input is getting bigger more quickly so actually what's happening is every x value gets added one okay so we know that in f of x if f of x f of negative 2 gave me oh actually f of negative 3 f of negative 3 gave me 0 because at negative 3 I was on the x-axis. Now I'm reaching it at negative 4. Why? Because now when x is equal to negative 4 we add 1 to make things happen quicker so now we're already at negative 3 because we added 1. So when I move to the left or translate left we uh, with p units 
the new function actually becomes f and inside we get an x plus p again i think with examples you will understand quite well okay if i go to the right with p units i will subtract x minus p okay and the reason this time why it gets the negative is because now things are happening slower let's say i go two units now it looks something like that okay instead of turning at x equal to negative 2 now I'm turning at x equal to 0 well supposed to be okay at x equal to 0 and so things are, are happening slower I'm not turning at negative 2 already I'm only turning at 0 so this time to make things happening slower we will subtract a 2 so this will be the same function formula but instead of an x we'll have an x minus 2 but let's look at a few examples in the next video